Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today we're looking at a shotgun. This is the American Tactical Imports Bulldog manufactured in Turkey. Now this is a bullpup shotgun. Bullpup shotgun basically means your action is behind the pistol grip. So we have a bat with magazine fed. Now the primary use for something like this would probably be self-defense. It would be as a home defense weapon. One of the things about bullpup uh, weapons in, in general is that when it comes to being able to maneuver in small areas um, inside buildings uh, inside of a home it's overall short you have an 18 and a half inch barrel here with the shotgun that's overall uh, length of 26 inches so it's easier to maneuver in a, in a home or in any kind of an enclosed close quarter battle condition now the shotgun again manufactured in turkey for american tactical uh, has a mag is magazine fed we have a five shot magazine we also have a 10 shot magazine which unfortunately i don't have an example of that one here but we do have a five and a ten now the five is a lot more practical being able to uh, maneuver much more easily the 10 sticks out uh, much further it's a little bit more awkward to be able to use but uh, overall the five round is is, is, a, is probably a better option for most general use now this fires both uh, two and three quarter inch as well as three inch magnum sh uh, shotgun shells now the ammunition i tested in this was specifically uh, double lot buck and buckshot. Now uh, the shotguns are designed for the most part to fire full power loads. Now I did not have access to any non-military uh, or law enforcement grade ammunition so that wasn't tested. Uh, for the most part all I would use in a shotgun like this would be a double lot buck and it would be uh, slug. Uh, so that was what we had tested with it. So we're going to go over the shotgun. Uh, now, it has some unique features to it. Uh, it has a lot of uh, M16, AR-15 type features. First thing we'll take a look at is the cocking handle. The cocking handle is a T-cocking handle, so very similar to that of an AR-15 M16. Now, when we look at the left-hand side, we have a bolt catch, which is identical to the ping-pong panel of the AR-15 M16. We do have a cheek riser on here, so you can... Uh, if you have any kind of optic that you're going to place on here, you can adjust uh, your, your cheek elevation. We have a continuous 1913 rail. And on the sides here, we have small 1913 rails, as well as in the bottom, we have one as well. I had added a pistol grip to this because this uh, we fired it both with and without the pistol grip on it. And I thought that made it much easier to have the pistol grip that was on there. Your safety is your typical cross bolt. Uh, Some of that of most shotguns. Uh, it is a little bit more narrow. But it, but it uh, does work out quite well. It's, it's, it's right where your finger would need to have it. You do have sort of a makeshift barrel shroud on here. Now, it does come with, uh, with backup iron sights. These are very uh, similar to that of an AR-15 M16 type sight. Uh, you have elevation and windage on the rear, and you have uh, elevation on the front. Uh, these can be put either way. Uh, unfortunately, when I first shot this, I had this on the wrong direction. So when I adjusted the elevation, it went uh, down instead of up. So once we, once we figured, that out, figured that out, we flipped it around and we were good to go. We have two apertures on the rear. Uh, again, the, the, the windage is done with a knob. Looking at the ejection port, we do have a fire cartridge case deflector on here, which basically ke keeps them out of the face of a left-handed shooter, uh, which is certainly a good thing. So again, we have about a 10.5 pound shotgun, and with that weight, it does make it very, very manageable for as far as recoil is concerned. Now, for doing the test firing for this, I recruited my son uh, because it's a little bit hefty recoil, and I thought he would enjoy that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this to the range and we're gonna see how it shoots.
Now, we fired over 250 rounds out of this. Um, 200 of it was, uh, for the most part, um, all state double at buck. And then I had some Winchester slugs, and we also had some Hornady tap, uh, the tactical application buck shot, as well as the uh, light recoil slug. Um, with the exception of the first couple magazines, it was flawless. Uh, the first couple magazines, I'm going to talk about basically being that the shotgun had to be broken in. Uh, we just had some failures to feed. Uh, but after those first two magazines, everything did run flawless. Uh, recoil, you know, it's, it's a 12 gauge. It's, it's a little bit stout. Um, it did cycle whether I had it up to, up to my shoulder or if I had it underneath. Um, so it did, it did cycle uh, all different ways that we shot it. Uh, the only thing we really shot for accuracy was specifically was a slug, and we will see a picture of the group that we had here, which is fully acceptable for uh, 50 yards for, for a slug gun. Of course, when uh, we did do the adjustment for the slugs, we had to uh, adjust the front sight. Uh, as it came from out of the box, uh, the front sight was way too, uh, was shooting way too high. We had to lower it, but uh, the groups were certainly acceptable. Now, the overall shotgun is gas-operated. Uh, it's a very simple type uh, conventional gas-operated shotgun. So for as far as shooting different types of loads is concerned, again, we only shot law enforcement type buckshot and slugs. However, it's also designed for, for bird shot. It does come with a kit, which gives you two other options for choke tubes. The choke tube that comes in is the improved cylinder, which is what you would use for a slug and buckshot. Uh, these are more of a full and additional ones that you would use for different types of shot. And you do have your adjustment tool on here as well. So overall, this shotgun will shoot pretty much everything that there is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over how this thing comes apart because it's relatively uh, unique at how that it does come apart. Now, for an overall, you do have a single locking lug. It's a very conventional type shotgun for as far as the way that it functions. But uh, for as far as ease of disassembly, uh, you only require two tools. You have a barrel nut wrench and you have an Allen key. And we're going to show how those work. So for disassembly, obviously, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to ensure that it's empty. So we have to do, first thing we have to do is we have to remove the the cheek weld. Just a matter of unscrewing. And that will pop right off. Now the barrel shroud, as we see here, uh, this will just unscrew. Now this also holds in the mounting bracket. We have very fine threads. We have three captive takedown pins, which will take a pin punch. Pull to detent, and now we can remove the lower. Now, as we see, the it's all polymer. We do have a feed ramp, so as we can see, our feed ramp right here. Now, when you have a bullpup, you will see that your trigger is all the way up here, but your hammer mechanism is back here. So you have to have a long, basically a trigger bar that comes back to release the trigger. Now, as we can see, we have a very, very reminiscent of an AR-15 M16 bolt catch. And our safety cross bolt. Now the serialized part is not the lower; it's the actual uh, receiver itself. So this is not the, the the part which we have that's 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 serialized. So now the next thing that we have to do, we have to loosen these two bolts here, which hold the handguard onto the receiver. Now these are hand snug; these are not uh, torqued. Now these just have to be loose and they don't have to be taken out. So now we'll pull the handguard right off. We have a conventional type gas system. So the next thing we gotta do is we have to remove our front cap. And this is also done by hand. And then we have very fine threads on here. Three hours later. Remove our front cap. 
Next thing we're going to do is we have to loosen this screw, which again, this is also hand tight. There's no torquing on any of these. Now we have the barrel nut. Now the barrel nut, this was, uh, this was relatively loose as it came, but we unscrew barrel nut and now everything comes right out the front. So here we have the receiver and this is also your serialized component. So now we slide off our front and now we unhinge the operating rod from the bolt and now we have our operating rod, our recoil spring, and now we can lift our bolt right out. And this is all you have to it. Now what's very nice is this is all uh, raw stainless steel, so this can be relatively easy to clean. And we have a very conventional bolt, as we see our single locking lug, our single locking lug recess. And this is really all there is to it for, for this assembly. Now we can see our gas ports, we have two. So it's two gas ports. So that works very well with lighter ammunition by having two. There are no uh, seals on here. There's no rubber O-rings uh, to go bad. So reassembly, we're gonna drop our bolt right back into place. Now we're gonna drop our recoil spring. Our operating rod. The operating rod will hook back onto the back of the bolt. Operating guide. Again, hand tight. Now we take our receiver and we insert straight in. Now we take our barrel nut. Now we want to take this down just hand tight. Again, there's no torque ratios on these. We want to take our screw, and again, hand tight. We'll take our hand guard. Now again, this is hand tight, this is not torqued. Now we have our locking bracket place over the front and you can see how that slides right into place. And then we take our barrel shroud and our barrel shroud is what locks this into place. Now installation of your lower receiver. And that's all there is to it. So as you can see, maintenance is very, very simple. Does this have to be done every time? Absolutely not. Uh, just when it gets extremely filthy. Another interesting feature you have here is uh, the magazine. This will slide over your 1913 rail to give you the ability to have a vertical pistol grip. Uh, this tends to be a little bit too wide for me, so I tend to like to go with the, the standard type of a pistol grip. So overall, we have, a, we have an excellent shotgun you know, for, 
for $500. Uh, we have a good uh, bullpup shotgun. We have something that can be easily used for self-defense, uh, for home defense, um, for hunting if you so chose. If you were to put an optic on here and slugs, you could certainly use this as a, as a hunting shotgun. Again, don't be fooled by the fact that it's 26 inches. You do have an 18.5 inch barrel, which is a standard slug size barrel. You can remove these iron sights and put on a, a red dot, put on a magnified optic, put on whatever you would like. So uh, we do hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Please consider being part of our Patreon family. We are a viewer-funded channel. Thank you.